privilege to be thanking God today for his day of salvation, for his day of being able to worship with him. This is his appointed time. Hallelujah. He said, remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. You can worship any other day you want to, but he said worship on the Sabbath day. That's his appointed time that he gave. He had it himself, did it himself, and then he also gave it to mankind. Hallelujah. So this is a day of worship, a praise, and a let the word of God come forth. We already had worship. We sounded forth the call for worship, and we have had it. Now it's a sound the call for the word of God to come forth. So praise God. Let's give that call today. Hallelujah. Thank God for this day. He's the God of this day. He's the God of every day. So let's just open up and let him come in. Let's let the word of God touch our hearts. And let's give our all that to him that we can be able to be set free from the things of this life. The hurts, the pains, the sick things that the devil has caused in, in, in this life. But praise God, we can live above this life. Hallelujah. So let's let the word of God comfort us today. Give us that encouragement, that love that we can have. This love is the greatest of all. So let's just uh, let, accept this love. As our our pastor here, Pastor Michael Linehart, is coming with the Word of God. So let's receive it, let's live it, and let's go forth in the power of His Word. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Much shalom, everyone. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this day. It's good to see you all in the house of the Lord this day. And I ask you to bear with me. This is my grand finale, my first one. <laughs> so. Father, we thank you for this day to be able to come and worship with you and to hear your word and I ask you to let your spirit touch each and every one of us as your word comes forth. In Yeshua's holy name, amen. 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 In the beginning, God spoke. In the beginning, God spoke. When God spoke, things happened. He says, let there be light. And there was light. When God spoke, things were created. All the plants, the animals, the trees were created. But before anything was created before all the galaxies the universe anything was created God spoke a very special word he called you by name before he created anything he called your name he knew you and called you by name before he created anything then he spoke everything into existence he spoke it And as he speaks, things happen. As Yeshua, Christ Jesus, walked this earth, he spoke. He spoke to the He spoke to demons. He spoke to sickness. He spoke to disease. When he spoke, things happen. But when he spoke, he spoke what he heard the Father say. He did not speak outside of what the Father said. In Proverbs 13, 3, whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. He who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. We have to watch what we say. Watch what you speak. What you speak is either life or death. What you speak is either health or sickness. How are you going to call into your life? Health or sickness? Life or death? Ephesians 4.29 Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouth 
but only such as is good for building up as first the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. When you ask somebody how they're doing, some of them say, well, I'm all right. I woke up above ground this morning and I guess I'm all right. They're speaking that into their life daily. Or, my allergies, my cancer, my this, my that. The doctor says I have, the doctor says this, the doctor says that. What? Tell me, what does the Word of God say? In this book, His Word, it has everything you need for your life. Are you battling depression? The cure is here. Are you battling some kind of illness? The cure is here. The results of different things have had have told me different things. But my God says, Beloved above all things, I wish that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. How does your soul prosper? Your soul prospers right here with this. The word of the Most High and only true and living God. yod heh vav -Hey. The only true and living God. No Allah, no Buddha, no Hi Harry Krishna or anybody else can save you but Him. And His words. And His words should be the words coming out of your mouth. Not your words. Not death and destruction. And how do you get these words? By studying His word. And by studying His Word, you get faith. Well, how does faith come? Pastor, how does faith come? By hearing. And how do you hear the Word? All right, I'm going to demonstrate here. I'm going to sit at home and I'm going to... Did you hear that? I could not hear that myself. How am I going to have faith if I cannot hear the Word? But now, if I open up the Word... To any scripture, not the concordance. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmur. Did you hear that? Because I spoke. When I speak, I hear. Try a little study on yourself. Read a chapter. Quietly to yourself without speaking. And then write afterwards. What you got from that chapter. Then read the same chapter out loud so you can hear it. And then write what you got from that chapter. And see the results. See the difference that is made for speaking what you speak. We will be judged on that day for every idle word that we say. Are our words going to be salvation lead us to salvation or condemnation when we were created the father says let us make man which is all of us male female in our image so if we're made in the image of the most high then why do we speak sickness, death, and destruction into our life that is like Him. Our bodies are made in His image. If we are in His image, then why do we destroy them? Why do we bring things into our bodies that destroys it? Speak health. Speak life. Speak happiness. I have done this many times. I'll be working on a project, building, vehicle, whatever it is. Things that go wrong. A nail bends. I make a measurement. I go over. I cut my board. I bring it back. I go to put it in. It's too short. I can't use that. And I get mad and I throw the board. Then the anger comes out. And then I would say, why? Why does everything got to be so hard for me? Why? 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 Why does it have to be this way? Why does it have to be that way? Why do I always have to struggle? Or I would say, you bonehead, you idiot, you this, you that. I'm calling myself all negative things. Putting myself down. 
until one day when I did that, the Holy Spirit goes, Yeah, what do you want? Why do you do that? Do what? Speak negative into your life. Put yourself down. The Father created you as Him. But you want to destroy that. So after that, things started changing. I started watching my vocabulary. Because my vocabulary can destroy me. Or it can build me up. Now, I, Michael Lionheart, am a child of the Most High God. I am a head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am prosperous, chosen. Chosen before all creation. I was chosen. No one can come unto the Father except the Spirit call Him. I was called before the creation of the world. You were all called before the creation of the world. So if you were called, why do you want to be negative? Why do you want to belittle yourself? Why do you want to hurt yourself? Why do you want to take the drugs that are going to destroy you? They got a cure. Okay, I got something that's going to help you with this disease. But these are the side effects. I got something that's going to help your skin clear up. These are the side effects. It'll kill you. But you'll look pretty when you're in the coffin. But it'll kill you. But it'll help your skin. Take your pick. This is what man does. What does God do? Go to him. If there's any sick among you, Go to the elders of the church. They will anoint you and lay hands on you and pray for you, and you will be healed. Not, not shall, not could. You will, because you were healed when He was on the cross. When He was on the cross, when Christ Yeshua was on the cross, what did He say? By His stripes were healed, but what else did He say? This is very important. Because it was a message not just for them, but also for now. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. This was for them at the crucifixion, but also for us now, asking forgiveness for us because we don't know what we do when we speak the negative stuff into our life. When we speak, it affects our immune system. It affects our healing system. We can speak life or we can speak death. What we speak is very profound. When the Father spoke, things happen. We are given the same. When we speak, things happen. Whether it's good or bad. Health or life. Which do you want? Which do you want to have? There was a study that was done. See if I have it here real quick. I'm not sure. But anyway... They, they've done different studies on what we speak. And I had proven this once with an aunt of mine. They did over 25,000 people in different studies. They would ask them, how is your health? Good? Fair? Poor? Excellent? Those who would say, my health is poor within three to four years we're dead guaranteed they're gonna die within three to four years because that was their mindset even though every test that was done on them says that their bodies are in perfect health but their mind their speak their words what they spoke destroyed them and it killed them because of what we speak our words are very powerful there's an old saying that sticks and stones may break my bones but names will never hurt me. That is so wrong. I used to quote that a lot. Sticks and stones might break my bones, but ain't no name going to hurt me. I guarantee it. And then I started realizing that those names that I grew up hearing, you're no good. You'll never have nothing. You'll never be nothing. You're nothing but trash and all this and all the negative talk that was put into my life did something. It destroyed me. Then I got to looking back as the Spirit was working on me. In grade school, teacher asked, make a list of everything you want to accomplish in your life. And I did. I made a list. 
everything I put on that list, I have accomplished. One thing I not put on is because I was never taught it. And that was to be a faithful servant of the Most High God who created me. And that's the one thing I should have put on that list right at the top. And to not speak evil against anyone. When you speak evil against someone, it destroys them. Tell somebody, your spouse, ex-spouse, whatever, I hate you. I wish you were dead. I know people who have done this, and that person died. And then they felt horrible because I killed him. I had an aunt we called Miss Aches and Pains. We used to make fun of her. So I tried, a, I tried an experiment of my own without nobody in the family knowing. I went over to her house, and I was acting sick. Every joint in my body aches, my bones ache, this, this, that, that, and I'm going over everything. And I come up with some fictitious name. It so sounded so far out like most of the diseases there is, you can't pronounce them. All the medical terms you can't pronounce, so she grabbed right on it. About a month later, her and my uncle and all them are over at mom and dad's for a get-together. She's sitting there talking to my mom, telling her mom about all these new problems she has. And how many more pills she has to take. She had more pills in her medicine cabinet than the drugstore. And she took them faithfully every day. And I believe a lot of them were just water pills or sugar pills that the doctor gave her just to shut her up. And she's telling mom hey, all of her symptoms. And then mom says, well, what is it called? And she come up with this name, and I started laughing, and I had to run. And I, I played it off as I was laughing at what, what one of the kids did. My mom come up to me, and she's, Michael, that's not nice you laughing at her like that. I says, Mom, this is what I did, and she just proved me right. Everything she spoke into her life and, and got every symptom that I spoke because it was in her mind. She spoke it. Yeshua spoke to the fig tree. The next time they saw it, the disciples, Hey, dude! Well, this is this is Michaelology. Hey, dude! What'd you do? Cotton picking thing died. It didn't feed me. Why should it stay alive if it don't feed me? Lift me up. Keep me healthy. The same with your words. Why should your words stay alive if they don't feed you and heal you and keep you up? How are you doing today? Oh, I'm living paycheck to paycheck, but I'm making it. You're speaking that into your life. That's why you're living that way. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. That means in every aspect. I don't have two nickels to rub together, but I'll tell you what. I am the most blessed man that there is. My bank accounts are so full, i got to open new ones. My storehouses are so full, i got to build new ones. I just had a... My, my mama donkey just had a baby donkey. That is a blessing from God. I have asked people in stores get to talking to them. How you doing today? Oh, I'm down yeah, 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 there complaining. I said, but you're blessed. How? One, two, three, four. You have five little ones here. God blessed you with this. Or mom and dad split up. They get a divorce. Dad leaves, leaves the kids with mom. Mom blames the kids. Mom cursing the kids. It is your fault. You're this. You're no good. You're trash. You're this. You're that. Or dad doing the same thing. Even if they're together, they're always hollering at the kids. They're not teaching them. Your words kill and destroy or heal and lift up. I'm walking across the truck stop parking lot. Another driver coming at me out of the truck stop heading to his truck. And I'm walking like this here. And I says, hey, brother, how you doing? Oh, I'm okay. How you doing? He says, I'm blessed. I was hurting in places, but I was, I'm blessed. It don't matter how I feel when I wake up. I could feel like I had a very bad night. And the first thing out of my mouth is, man, I had a rough night. 
Then I did. I had a rough night. My whole day's ruined. But when I wake up, instead of reaching over, grabbing this, okay, what's on Facebook? How, how did I dare them people do? Look at that. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. And complaining about everything on Facebook. Why don't you wake up as soon as your eyes open up and you're starting to stretch and everything? Thank you, Father, for a beautiful, blessed night. Thank you for waking me up this morning and another blessed day. I look in the mirror now and I tell myself, you are a child of God. You are blessed. You are an overcomer. You are a lender, not a borrower. We are not supposed to be borrowers. We're not supposed to be stuck in debt. So speak yourself out of it. Take it to the Most High God and speak. Speak. Speak His Word back to Him. He wants to hear you. Speak His back to Him. Telling Him His promises that He promised you. And hold Him accountable. And I do it every day. Father, you said right here, it says, you said, now, you cannot lie. So I hold you accountable. And he has to stay with his word. Because his word is law. His word is law. He is just so awesome. Now it has gotten to where I'll be thinking, Well, Father, all my boots got holes in them. They're falling apart. I'm going to have to save up some money and go buy me some new pair, new pair of boots. Well, I give it to you, Father. It's in your hands. He's brought me three different pairs of boots, different kinds. Father, all my work pants and stuff is wearing out. They've got rips across here. The crotch is ripped out, whatever. I can't wear them out in public. And if I go to do a job at somebody's house, I can't wear these. You know, they're, hey, I don't want you in my house looking like that. Next thing I know here, he can't wear these. See if they fit you, and they do. I have more pants. I have money to fix a vehicle. He has taken care of every single need that I have. And since I have been speaking life into my body, and not death and destruction, I went over an MRI that was done on my lower back, and... The first doctor I went over it with, he's pointing out all the broken bones that I have, but they had not separated, but they're broke. And I have herni they, they said that I have herniated disc. I say, I stand on the word of the Most High God. I am in perfect health. Thursday, I went to Austin. I took my old beat up pickup. I says, Lord, it's made it before. You can make it happen again. I made it all the way to Austin and back in this pickup. Not a bit of problem. And while I was there, I went over, I was meeting with my surgeon that did the surgery on my neck. And God has healed that. That is healed. He says, your neck is healed. And then he says, now, going over the MRI on your back, he says, your back is, back is not as critical as your neck was. I says, what about the broken bones? They seared back together. You can see where they're broke, but they're together. They healed back together. You can see where there's problems with the disc in between in different areas, but God has taken care of that. I ain't in the best. I could say I ain't in the best hell. I could say I'm broke up, but I'm not. I am healed in the name of the Most High God. And I can touch my toes without going, oh, that hurt. Remember when I couldn't? Remember when I couldn't turn my head without hollering pain? Couldn't lift nothing up? Yush has done all that in teaching me, watch what you speak. Speak life and not death. You want it. You speak it. You believe it. Faith cometh by hearing, 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 not thinking. He did not create everything by going, thinking, let there be light. Well, nobody could hear what he wanted to do. 
If you can't hear the commander giving the order, what happens? Nobody does anything. You're at war. You're in a battle. We are in a battle. We are all soldiers. If we cannot hear the commands of the commander-in-chief, the Most High God, then we don't know what to do because we don't hear. Get in the Word. Speak it out loud to get it into your heart. Watch what you say at any given point in time. And if somebody upsets you, they cut you off in traffic, you want to get angry and everything else, says, well, I guess you needed that spot more than I did. I'm going to back off. God bless you. Have a very blessed day. Somebody wanted to pick a fight with me going into a store, and I heard him in the back and the back back there, and I turned around and looked, and he's with his wife, and he's trying to look big for his wife, but, well, the old me, I'm just going to knock him down. But the Holy Spirit spoke and says, no, if he comes close to you and speaks that negative, you turn around and tell him, excuse me, I understand what you're trying to do, but it's not going to work. I don't fight my battles no more. I give all my battles over to my Lord, and he takes care of them for me. So, is there anything you need me to pray about it for you? That's what he says to do. Bless your enemies, and you will be blessed. And at this time, I'm going to ask Sister Patty to come up and sing a song for us that she wrote. Oh, my heart? Yes. As you're coming up, get the, get, get the Miko mic. And I had a stress test done. I had my first heart attack back in 2007 in Arizona. I've had three. The last one I was life flighted to Abilene from up here by the lake. Well, I hadn't had a stress test done since 2007. I was supposed to have one every couple years. So I told the VA this, and I says, I, I need a stress test. After fighting to get my VA medical approved, thanks to a couple of very good friends of mine helping me get this done. One, different doctors are telling me about the stress test. Your age, the average, is 80, maybe 85. It's your age. But you beat it. You was 91 and climbing. I says, that's pretty good for someone that's had three heart attacks and has stents. No, no damage to the heart. Oh, every doctor I've told that to says, how's that possible? I says, the most high God. He is the one that made this possible. Yes, amen. That's where we're waiting for you to sing. I'm ready. Yes. Sing. Yes, yes. I am on. Yes. Uh, I've been hurting in my back for quite some time, and little by little I'm getting healed. And uh, But anyway, uh, I've, all through the night I, I had read the scripture before I went to bed, and all through the night I'd wake up just be talking about the Lord and and praising him, and just, oh, my mind was just on him. And then, so I woke up about 4.30, 4.49, somewhere around there, and uh, the, uh, I just I, just out of my spirit, I started singing this song. And after I got through singing it, I got up and walked the floor and sung it, got one of my star phone boxes and started hitting it like a drum, and was singing this song, and I thought, Pastor needs to take that back to Africa with him. But anyway, uh, uh, I, I thought, I thought, Lord, because in the song it says that I, I, walk, I, li I am in perfect peace, I'm in perfect health, I'm in perfect love. Well, who is perfect? Jesus. God. God is. Not me, but God is. And he says he lives big in us. And so he also said that his blood is flowing freely in me. And the more I thought about that, Mike and I was talking about this last night, about how bad uh, Yeshua was beaten and uh, that you couldn't even recognize that he was even a man. And, uh, and he did all that for us. 
and like we were talking, but yet still on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You know, there's times that just what Mike brought up a while ago about driving down the highway, that's where I got to work on. Oh, my word, I get so irritated at people getting in front of me. Oh, and I'm talking back to them, don't think I'm not. And the Lord wanting to get hold because that's hard as you. <laughs> and I know it is. But it's just like, say, really? And I'll even drive up beside them when I go to pass them and, look, and give them an attitude. You know, and that's not right. But one of these days, it's going to be some church member that's going to get hold of me and say, Patty, that was me. You better quit that. But anyway, the song goes like this. And y'all can sing it because it's just a repeat. It's just, I'm in perfect peace. I'm in perfect peace. The blood of Yeshua flows freely in me. I'm in perfect peace. Close your eyes and think about it. I'm in perfect peace. The blood of Yeshua flows freely in me. Is that too low? I'm in perfect health. I'm in perfect health. Yes, we are, aren't we? The blood of Yeshua flows freely in me. Think about that. He's born in you. I'm in perfect health. I'm in perfect health. The blood of Yeshua flows freely in me. Next one is love. Are y'all having a little love walk? I'm in perfect love. I'm in perfect love. The blood of Yeshua flows freely in me. Thank you, Father. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm in perfect love. I'm in perfect love. The blood of Yeshua flows freely in me. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You know, I was sitting back there while, well, well, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> sat back there and listening to Mike and everything he was saying and I thought you know God help us to get excited help us to get excited about the things of God we can go to a football game and sit there and get him get him get him Woo! and praise the Lord you know and then we come here and just and then my, my, my heart was healed you know, we should have got, whoo, praise the Lord, Mike. That's awesome that you were healed, you know. Amen. Yes, amen. 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 That's awesome. That's awesome. Amen. We've got to get excited because amen. I'll tell you what, once we get excited, it's going to spread yes. out there. That's where we got to take it. It's out there. But we among each other, we got to get excited. And you know what? I don't care how old I get, I want to be a fanatical for the Lord. I Amen. really do. Amen. And I, I was going to say, even if I walk with a cane, but I'm not going to miss that. No. But I'll walk and believe God. Yeah. But anyway, get excited about the Lord. And you know, I was telling one of my girls that I'm having to mentor in Illinois from, the, from my radio station. I told her, I said, if you'll get excited in your house, because that's where it starts, is in your home. Don't come here expecting Pastor and Margie and, and Pastor and Pastor over there, <laughs> over a uh, Homer, to do it for us. God's given us the word, and we're supposed to do it at home. And I'll tell you what, when you do it at home and read his word and pray and get excited, I tell you what, if anybody could, lift, could eavesdrop on my house, they'd probably they'd go home and say, 
we need to move. That lady is jumping up and down. He, she's yelling. She's even running through her whole house, and, and it, she's excited. You know, she's a little weird. I want to be weird for the Lord, don't y'all? Amen. <laughs> you know, and, and laughter and being excited is, is contagious. And it's like, I don't want to be around anyone that's going to be talking negative all the time because it, it, it just puts a, a sour note on you. We don't need that. We want to be excited. And God's got great things for all of us. And I just, I'm excited, Mike. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Pat. <laughs> well, I just said not yet. <laughs> yeah. Abba Father, we thank you for this time to come together. We thank you for being with us. Let us all carry something home from what you gave me to share. It's not my words. It was your words, Father, that you used me to share with others. Bless each and every one that is here. Prosper every, everyone that is here, and that everything that their hands touch prosper. In your name, amen.